Squashes can be amazing growers. They can climb right up and over trees and corn plants. Uh, they can spread sometimes up to 20 feet from where you first planted them. So make sure you leave plenty of space between the plants. If you're going to be doing hand pollinations, you're going to have to be able to find the female flowers without digging through too much of a uh, mess. So do give them some space so that you can find the flowers and also the fruits later. Bees are very fond of squash blossoms and so if we're going to make controlled pollinations we're going to have to find a way to keep the bees out. So the real critical piece of the method is to close the flowers up the night before so we can pollinate flowers that the bees have not already been to. Unlike the female flowers, male flowers frequently come in large clusters. You can see a group of them just underneath some leaves. The male flowers can be identified by the single stalk in the center that's going to bear all of the pollen. When you look at them underneath, you also don't find an ovary, just a simple long stalk that holds them up far away from the stem. Male flowers arise at nearly every node along the length of a vine. You'll see most of them blooming closer to the hill. So you'll have to mark those and uh, make sure you can find them again. They won't be quite as easy to find as the females if they bend down underneath some of the leaves because these will be closer to the center of the hill in the deep growth. Here we see a male flower peeking out from beneath some leaves. You can see that it's on a long stem. There's no uh, ovary underneath, so classically the male flower. In order to prepare that for pollinating early tomorrow morning, we're going to take a clothes pin and simply attach it to the end of the blossom to keep it from opening up. And it's going to drop down out of sight. It's sometimes very good to make sure we mark where these blossoms are so we can find them again in the morning. Female flowers grow very close to the vine. You have to find them underneath the leaves. You can tell a female flower pretty quickly because inside you'll see this large stigmatic surface and if you look underneath the flower, behind the petals, you'll see the swollen ovary which will become the fruit once the flower is pollinated. Female flowers open progressively from the center of the hill and then outward from there as the vines spread. So look for new female flowers opening and being ready for pollination on the edge of the growth uh, each day. A female flower like this late in the afternoon has already been exposed to bees and is probably pollinated. We're going to have to find a female that's showing some yellow color to the petals but they have not yet opened. This female flower is premature. It's hardly developed, it's not very large yet, and we don't see the petals expanded very much. This is not one we would want to mark for tomorrow. This female flower hiding in the grass here is ready for pollination tomorrow. The corolla of petals is very much expanded, the ovary is very large, it's extending away from the stem and it's certainly going to be ready in the morning. Uh, in order to prepare it, I'm going to use a clothespin on the end of the petals to keep them closed until I'm ready to open it. That should do the trick and keep the bees out. I also like to use a stake of some sort to help me find that flower when I come around in the morning because sometimes it's easy to lose track of where they are. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to actually make a cross-pollination. I've got a female here that has been uh, kept closed overnight with the clothespin and a couple of male flowers and I'll just demonstrate how it's done. Uh, it's about 7 in the morning. Uh, squash pollination is usually done uh, pretty early on and I'm going to use two male flowers that's not necessary if you've got good pollen ones uh, frequently plenty. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is open up the female and you can see it opens up wide and the stigma down inside is pretty visible there 
And what I'm going to do is now open up the mail by taking off the paper, uh, clothespin and I'm going to turn it into a little paintbrush. I'm going to peel off all of the petals and so that I have the base of the flower and then I also have this stalk upon which all of the uh, pollen structures are there and there's some pollen uh, coming, there's a little bit coming off on my hand so it's definitely ready and I'm going to reach into the female flower and basically paint this loose pollen onto the stigma making sure to gently coat the entire surface as best I can and that ought to do and I'll show this one more time to open up the male flower in this case I'm using two because I'm making half sibs uh, there are two different uh, male plants being used for this particular cross so there'll be uh, all the seeds in this particular fruit will be from the same mother but have uh, two different fathers. Okay, again, go in there and paint onto the stigmatic surface. And I can see lots of pollen just rolling all off of it right now. So it's very, very well covered. That should do. Then I'm going to take I close pin and close this back up again because I don't want bees coming later this morning with uh, other pollen from other flowers. I'm going to carefully close up all the petals and clamp it shut. And what I will do next is take a small piece of uh, flagging tape and I will tie about eight or ten inches of it in a loose. Uh, not right around the base of this or the handle of what will be the stock if you're used to that term. I'll tie it loosely because I'm not sure just how big this one will get uh, and I want to make sure I don't cut it off later but I'll, I'll mark it in bright orange then I'll know uh, when it's time to harvest that this was in fact a flower that I had carefully hand pollinated and that's pretty much the job. Uh, mark them and then uh, harvest the uh, marked fruits later uh, separately from any unmarked fruits which can be for eating but not for seed saving and we as open up, as we open up those fruits we'll be saving seeds from the marked fruits uh, cleaning and drying those and using those for seeds next year this is a developing fruit that I pollinated a few days ago um, you can see that within a day or so after pollination I've removed the clothespin because uh, the flower is no longer accepting pollen and the uh, stigma and all of the petals are going to die back and you can see something must have happened because the fruits beginning to swell uh, this one's been marked and it should be a good one to come back to later in the fall Successful hand pollinations look like this. As I pull away some of the leaves and look close to the ground, I see swelling fruits marked with orange tape to tell me that I had actually hand pollinated those. And when those fruits are mature, I can bring them in, split them open to eat, and save all the seeds. And I know they will be the same variety that I started with.